thank you for having me. I think the report really confirms the significant progress we've had in fighting HIV over the past 10 to 20 years, but it also really confirms how uneven that progress has been. So as noted, you know, new infections in HIV are down, the lowest they've been since the 1980s. And we now have 31 million people on treatment, which is a number we couldn't even imagine not that long ago. But when you start looking deeper, you see that in many places, infections are still high, particularly in adolescent girls and young women in Africa. And actually one out of 10 new infections in HIV is in children. So we need to really keep an eye on those places where the work isn't taking off and having as much progress as we'd like to see. Several African countries have uh, either met or surpassed the UN's 95-95-95 uh, targets to end, to end AIDS by 2030. That seems like progress, uh, but your foundation says current global HIV response is failing children. Tell us more about that. Thank you. Well, the title of the UNAIDS report was The Urgency of Now. And I think the report really reveals the lack of urgency we've seen around treating children with HIV. The treatment gap between adults and children is actually on the rise. Only about half of children living with HIV are on treatment. And if you're one of those lucky few, only half are virally suppressed. And in fact, one of, out of eight age-related deaths that are being seen are in children. So this is not a population that's receiving the same attention as others are receiving, and we think that needs to change. If we're really going to end the AIDS epidemic, we have to end the inequities that are facing children. Another issue is uh, a funding shortfall in the global HIV response. Now, what are advocates and experts gathered in Munich uh, saying about the state of funding for the global HIV response? I think the lack of funding that we're seeing is really sobering. Um, you know, we all talk about HIV. It is preventable, it is treatable, but it is not curable. And not addressing the prevention and treatment needs today means we're just creating more problems for the future. It's hard to see how these funding shortfalls are going to be met. It's not going to be met by just one government, one actor. It's going to take everyone to really fill those funding gaps, particularly from domestic resources of African governments as well as international donors.